Okay, in this video we're gonna look at the notion of the curvature of a curve. So we need a preliminary definition. So given a curve r of t, the arc length function of r is given by this function s of t, which is the integral from a to t of uh, the magnitude of the vector r prime of u du. So we've changed to a dummy variable du. So in other words, the output of s of t gives us the length from the starting point of the curve to an arbitrary variable t. So that's why it's called the arc length function. And now next, we want to define the curvature of r of t. So that's given by, we'll call it kappa of t. And that's the magnitude of this vector. So it's the derivative of capital T with respect to S, so with respect to the arc length. And so as a reminder, capital T is the unit tangent vector. So in other words, we take the tangent vector, R prime, uh, and divide it by its magnitude. So let's look at why this is the right definition of the curvature before we um, prove this definition. <laughs> before we prove this observation, which gives us a more usable form for the curvature. So let's say we've got a curve like this. So let's say that is our curve R of t, and let's think about how curvature should be defined. So I think it should be defined as how curvy the uh, curve is, if you will. So in other words, it's really tightly curved right here, so the curvature should be quite large in this region and quite small in this region. But what we notice is going on is in this region over here, the tangent vector is barely changing at all. So the tangent vector here is pointing in this direction. The tangent vector here has barely changed direction. But up here, the tangent vector has been changing direction a lot. So here the tangent vector is pointing up. Here the tangent vector is pointing uh, mostly down. So we've got a large change in the tangent vector. But then we don't really Really care about the magnitude of that tangent vector we really just care about the direction and furthermore we don't really care about how fast the particle is moving we're really just we really just care about the tightness of the curve and so that is why we use the unit tangent vector in the derivative and the derivative with respect to the arc length. So instead of taking the derivative with respect to the time which would give you how fast the tangent vector is changing with respect to time, we're looking at how fast the unit tangent vector is changing with respect to the distance on the curve. So, uh, that would give you a large curvature here and a small curvature here, and then something in the middle over here, for instance. Okay, great. And so now, we're going to prove this observation, which says that the curvature is really the magnitude of this unit tangent vector divided by the magnitude of the tangent vector itself. So I'll clean up the board, and then we'll do that proof. Okay, so the first thing that we'll notice is that capital T prime, which is also denoted by by dt by d little t is given via the chain rule by dt by ds where this is that arc length function and then ds by dt. Great. But now notice that this is going to be equal to dt by ds and then d by dt of this arc length function which is the integral from a to t of the magnitude of r prime of u du. Great. But now if we zoom in on this part right here, we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 to take the derivative of an integral and that's going to give us dt ds times the magnitude of r prime of t. So just recall that what the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 does is it erases the integral and then it puts the upper bound inside the dummy variable. Okay, so the next thing that we can do is solve for this dt by ds. So dt by ds is now equal to t prime divided by the magnitude of r prime. 
good just dividing this thing over. But now notice our kappa is defined by the magnitude of this vector. So if we just take the magnitude of both sides of this vector equation, we will get this kappa on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, we'll get the magnitude of our unit tangent vector prime divided by the magnitude of um, r prime. Okay, good. So that's a nice proof of this formula, and this formula is a much more usable version of the curvature because you don't have to muck around with calculating the arc length function or anything. You just need any parameterization of the curve. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up the board and then we're gonna do an example. Okay, so as our example, we wanna look at this uh, classic problem of finding the curvature of a circle of radius A. So let's just recall, if we put a circle of radius A in the plane, so here we have a radius A over here. Well, it's uh, easy to see just by standard trigonometric facts that this x coordinate is given by A cosine t, and this y coordinate is A sine t, where t is given by this angle from the positive x axis. And so the great thing about that is that will give us a vector equation for this circle, which we can write as. Um, the vector a cos t, um, a sine t. And then if you prefer the other notation, this would be a cos t in the i direction plus a sine t in the j direction. Okay, great. So now we need our parts. So we need to know r prime and we need to know t prime and then we need to find their magnitudes. So notice we can easily calculate r prime just by taking the derivative of each component. So this is going to give us minus a sine t uh, a cosine t. Great. But now notice from here we can get t but before we get t, maybe we should find the magnitude of r prime. Great. So remember, the magnitude of r prime is going to be the square root of r prime dot r prime. I think this is maybe the best way to find the magnitude. But that's going to be exactly equal to, I'll just talk through it because it's fairly simple. We have a squared sine squared plus a squared cosine squared. So that's going to give us a squared because sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Then we take the square root and we get this r prime is equal to a. Great. And now let's recall that t is equal to r prime divided by its magnitude. Good. And so since the magnitude is just a, we just divide out each of the a's here. So this is going to give us minus sine of t and then cosine of t. Great. Now the next thing we need to do is to find the derivative of uh, t. So notice that t prime, well that's easy. We can just take the derivative of sine and cosine. So that's going to give us negative cosine t and then negative sine t. And then similarly, we can take the magnitude of t prime, and that's easy to see that that's 1, because what we get there is cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. We take the square root and we still have 1. Uh, the final thing we need to do is look at this kappa, this curvature, which is given by the magnitude of t prime divided by the magnitude of r prime. So that's going to give us 1 over a. Great. So the curvature of a circle of radius A is 1 over A. So now let's see if that makes sense. So as the radius gets larger, the curvature gets smaller, which that makes a lot of sense because notice if we've got a curvature really tightly bound around the origin, um, the tangent vector is changing direction much more quickly than if we have a circle with a large radius. Just think about the Earth. We can barely notice the curvature of at all and that is because the radius is so large. Okay, good. So this is a good place to end this video.